stormwater can be cold. But that's not the real concern for stormwater. Let's take a look. So the question we need to ask is where did the water go before we developed? So here's a overhead shot of Centaurus High School and um, this large parking lot area. Um, where did all the water go before this development was here when it was just grass and vegetation? Well, let's first take a look at um, what stormwater is. It is water from rain, snow, sleet, hail that flows across the ground and that flows across the pavement. So the rain or snow that's on the ground, um, soil, vegetation, trees, undisturbed areas can absorb a portion of that stormwater. So these would be a couple things that you'd want to jot down into your notes. And if there's anything on the pavement, those are called impervious surfaces. So areas such as concrete, asphalt, brick, they prevent water from inf infiltrating into the soil. Uh, they're impervious and they don't let water pass through. So where does all the storm water go? Well, it either seeps into the ground or it drains into storm drains from the impervious surfaces. Unless you have an unlevel surface like this, and then you just have a lake and the drains have no water going into them. So storm drains. Here's storm drains. You see these along the curbs in every neighborhood. Storm drains are connected to rivers and streams by an underground network of pipes called a storm sewer system, which helps prevent flooding from the rain. So when it, a lot of rain comes through, the, the streets are flowing with water, all that water without these storm drains would just continue to build up and you'd have raging rivers in your streets. Uh, but since it drains down into here, then that drains into these storm sewer drains and it goes into the stream. Storm water does not get treated like water we use in our homes. Anything that's poured into the gutter or drain, motor oil, antifreeze, uh, flows directly into the streams, ponds, or creeks, and these are called pollutants. So anytime you fertilize your yard, uh, whatever it is, if you have oil dripping from your car in the parking lot, anytime it rains, all of that is collected and all of that goes directly into the stream. There is nothing filtering that. Would you swim in this? When pollutants enter the creek, streams, and rivers, and lakes, they can cause aquatic habitat disruption. Uh, you can have fish kills, algae blooms, and also restriction on recreational activities. So um, here's an example of a place where a couple fish died. Uh, here's some really gross things. Uh, how can we control stormwater pollution in our town? Uh, we can teach the ducks how to talk. We can't prevent every single person from illegally dumping into our streets and waterways, even with the military action here. Um, for example, a Telluride man dumped 8,500 pounds of trash in the Uncompahgre National Forest because there was really no one there to regulate it until they sort of saw what was going on. Then as rain um, begins to fall and carries the stuff down this mountainside, all of it will end up in rivers and streams. So engineers use plants and soil to manage stormwater. So if you want to pause this and kind of take a look at what's happening here, uh, we have this tree, there's um, roots are kind of holding it in place. The soil will promote rapid plant growth and deep root development. Plants and soil work together to slow down and absorb stormwater runoff. And then as the water goes into the soil, the microorganisms in the soil break down the harmful pollutants. And that's why if you dig a well, and it's um, like I talked to you about in class, um, the well that we had in Alaska was 180 feet. That water by the time it got down there was completely clean and pure. Engineers use smart designs like this. So let's take a look at what's going on. The pavement was graded to direct stormwater runoff on the parking lot and the road in towards this filter strip here. River stones slow the water down. So that's kind of slowing the water so that you don't have a lot of runoff. You don't have a water rushing in and kind of wearing the dirt away. Then the suspended particles begin to settle out of the runoff and that helps the plants um, and the soil here. So it begins to kind of filter through. Uh, from the filter strip, water is collected by an underground drain in here, and that's channeled into this bioswale, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now, during heavy rains, excess water is channeled under the sidewalk grates into the bioswale. So you have sidewalk grates right here um, that all help channel it down into here. Now, once in the bioswale, some water infiltrates into the ground, which replenishes the groundwater supply, so that's a good thing. Unabsorbed storm water that is now cleaner is discharged into a nearby lake through a subsurface drain. So this is gonna drain, but it's a lot cleaner now because it's gone through the, this natural vegetation filtration. As water infiltrates through the bioswale, sediment and pollutants continue to be filtered out as it's traveling through here. And the microorganisms on the, and the plant roots and the soil break these pollutants down so that they're not dangerous anymore. So bioswale is kind of a key term that you're gonna to wanna to note. And this is sort of the idea that we're gonna um, pay attention to, bioswales and these filter strips. Engineers find solutions to existing problems. You put these large stones here like this and it prevents erosion because it slows the water down so you don't have rushing water 
it's kind of the water is trickling its way through this. Um, engineers fix parking lots. So look at this parking lot and you can see all this water is taking every pollutant that's in this parking lot down into the storm drain, which basically is putting it directly into rivers and streams. Here's a possible solution. You can see these parking islands, they are actually recessed. This area in here is actually lower than the parking lot and then there's these entrances into here. So water may be filtered, it may run along the edge of this curb, but eventually it's gonna find its way inside one of these. You can see a lot of them have these notches cut into them. And so that then feeds these plants and it filters that water. Here's another one, you just have a curb, water's collecting, um, or you could do it here without a curb and a recessed area. So all the water that is hitting the ground will actually drain into this bioswale, it'll be filtered and it feeds this vegetation. So where does our stormwater go? Well, let's take a look at some pictures. First, let me point out that water that hits the roof, when we took a look at our commercial roof design, you saw those drains. So those drains go down and they actually go, here's a spot here, there's a spot right here. Um, so they drain down and into the parking lot. So here is a picture of um, after a rain, there's water or snow melt. There's just water kind of running through the parking lot. We're looking straight at the school entrance here from the baseball field. All of that water then travels, and here's sort of the senior parking lot area, travels down into this drain right here. So all of it is going into this drain, and that's heading to the stream. Here's some snow melt. It just sits on these parking islands, and we have raised curb edges all the way along these parking lots. And along the baseball fields, there's this curb. All the water will run downhill towards these curbs and it sort of piles up and then it traverses this curb here. Then here's that storm drain. It's all draining directly into this. So I'm gonna show you a really quick video of um, water in action and kind of how it bangs into those parking islands and then goes around them. And then your goal is to try to come up with a better solution.